The table shows the position of a motorcyclist after accelerating from rest. So we have our table of values right here. Alright, so the question says, find the average velocity for each time period. Um, how to find it. So it says average velocity equals final position minus initial position. So let's say I subtract 20.6 minus 4.9. So this is final position. Here's my initial position. And the time elapsed would be 2 minus 1. So this is how you write it out. It's just the point slope form. All right, so we have this right here again. Just so we could look at it while we we're solving the problems. And so here it goes. So here's our first time interval, two to four. So right here, two and four. And so here's the final position. Here's the initial position. So 79.2 minus 20.6 which is the initial position and the time elapse is 4 minus 2 so we just plug it in and we end up getting 29.3 feet per second and we can use A and B if we wanted to instead of these variables we just have to change it up and so here's three and four so time it all three and four so I have it all color coded three and four so 79.2 minus 46.5 four minus three because that's the time elapsed and that ends again as 32.7 feet per second here's the next one it's time it all of four to five that ends up getting us 45.6 feet per second Here's the time interval for 4 to 6, and that ends up getting us 48.75 feet per second. And so, what we need to know is what this all is. This is actually the slope of the secant line. And so here I put PTS. Why PTS? Because T stands for time, S stands for position. And so that's what's happening. So T, which right here, time, S is position. So these are our points. All right, so now it says, the question is asking us to use this graph of S as a function of T to estimate the instantaneous velocity when T equals three. So instantaneous velocity, that's the slope of the tangent line. So we're given this curve and it's not mentioned in the problem, the intro of the problem. And so we just know that we have a curve. <coughs> so we, we have a curve, and then we have this point P. And our point P is going to be this, where t equals 3. So wherever t equals 3 is on the curve that's where our point's going to be so right it's going to be right here so let's keep going forward for the same we're given two different separate points these points are known as the point Q so A and C so you got two points Q and that ends up forming the secant line so what happens is what what a secant line is it's just a line that goes through intersects two separate points and it all leads up to making the tangent line so what happens when the secant line gets super close to the point p it converges and becomes the tangent line and so that's what we're trying to do right here is we're trying to estimate the instantaneous velocity and the instantaneous velocity is our tangent line. And how do you find a tangent line? We have to use the secant line, which is, remember what I said earlier, MPQ. We use the secant line. 
and get it closer and closer to the point P. And when it gets close, it converges and becomes a tangent line. And so now we have this triangle. And so in this problem, it says use the graph as a function. And so in this case, this is and this problem is not the best way for for finding the instantaneous velocity, but it, it's a one of the methods we could use. And we make a triangle from these two given points. These two given points are part of our table of values, remember? This is 79.2. This is 20.6. And so this falls under time 2 for t, and this falls under time 4 for t, 79.2. And so we have these sides. So AB is a side, right? This is so AB. This is this side. BC, what side is that? It's down here. All right, so what do we have to do now? It's that we got to subtract A minus B. Why do we have to do that? Because we got to subtract the difference between our position. So we subtract the difference between our position, and that ends up giving us 58.6. And what's the bottom step for? If you remember, that's our time intervals. So we end up subtracting the difference between time from from this point to this point. And that ends up giving us 2. And so if you remember, we already s solved this problem. If we were to go back in this video, we already solved this problem. But without this diagram. And so the reason why this problem and this method is not that good is because you could, it says make an estimate. And so you know what making an estimate means. Making an estimate has this symbol, approximating. We could actually say, let's have, let's say 79 minus 20. This is going to stay the same. It's just the position that's going to change. We could say something like this. Now, what is this going to give us? Let's see. 20 minus 79, 59. And 4 minus 2, that gives us 2. What's 2 divided by that? That's, let's see. Alright, anyways. And so, why is this bad? Because you don't necessarily know the position. Right, we, this is arbitrary position. We don't know the position of p. Right, we're not given a function. If we were given a function, and you know what I'm talking about, right? If we're given a function, and it has, I don't know, let's say x squared, right? So it's a function. Will be t squared because it says t. Let's go back, 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 back. So it just makes sense to you. So let's say we have this function t squared. You know how t squared looks like. It looks like this. So the big problem with this method is that you're just guessing. You're estimating. And that's the problem because you're not, it's not an accurate estimate. Right, if you have a function and you could plug in numbers to figure out the position, it's going to obviously be more accurate, right? This question is asking us to use the graph of s as a function of t to estimate the instantaneous velocity when t equals 3. We're using this graph as a function, but we don't necessarily know the actual position. And so that's the problem with using this method. So you're you're better off just 
giving this answer, the one that you already solved for, because why do more work than you have to do, you know? And if you want to give an answer like this, an approximation, because this is an estimation, then you can. But like I said, you could just give the answer that we already solved for earlier. So that's about it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. It will help me out a lot and it will allow me to keep making content like this for you. Thank you and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Thank you and bye.